Jerry, how do you spell Hindenburg? <laughs> F L A M I N G. Yes. Um, so we were wrong about crypto, everyone. Uh, we apologize for anybody that entered the crypto space because of Jerry or I. Uh, Our I'm, bad. My, yep, it's on me. <laughs> this is this one's me. This is me. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a mulligan. Um, we're gonna rebrand the show starting next week to Fixed Income and Coffee. <laughs> it's gonna be exciting. Hey, those those ten basis point moves can 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 be hair hair raising. Bam. Okay, so we're going to talk about some – I got some interesting articles. The last time we talked, we were talking about Michael Saylor. That was last week. And, uh, well, that bet cost him about $96 bucks. No biggie, but it will be a biggie if he crosses the 26000 mark because that means that all the Bitcoin they ever bought is now negative. And then he might have some questions to answer. On the other side of that, and I have an article about this, but on the other side of that, he, his shares in his company are up like 3x. So they're still up, even, even with all this sell-off, they're still up 2.5x, 250%. And that's pretty good for a company that's not selling cocaine. So, yeah. Jerry, what's going on in your world other than just everything's on fire and it's total anarchy? Well, it's, it's, it's amazing that in these, you and I both, and, and a lot of your viewers, <laughs> hopefully still remember that from from the onset of 2018 until mid-year 2020, this market did nothing but go down. I mean, come on. I mean, we were at a $200 billion total market cap for crypto in that March of 2020 range ish. It was a dark I mean, sucking hole of depression, but actually, actually it wasn't the prices were down and a lot of our valuations were down. If we were dollar cost averaging over that two and a half years, but you could see the value being built, although it wasn't reflected in the pricing. And so my new mantra, like the flag I'm carrying now is price is a liar. Right, price is subjective to whatever the last seller and buyer, you know, buyer agreed on, but it does not represent the value of the assets that I hold, and um, that could be a fool's errand. I could be carrying that flag all the way to zero, or, <laughs> or it could allow me to sleep at night while this the space matures because it really is. We're still early, early, early in this thing. We have to remember that. Or at least that's what I'm trying to remember so I can <laughs> say stay, sane. So I can sleep at night. Okay. So I can sleep at night. Let's say hello to a few people. And let's say hello. 29LH06, Gordon Bennett, Baykeepers, CC Brown, Sam D, Serious Boy. There's a lot going on in that name. Hootie, Solid Gold, Belinda Cook, McNabb. Philippe, Biotech Breakout, V. Relu. Row Row 80 and get involved. Hello. Let me say hello to Todd. He was actually the first one here. Todd B in the house. Bam. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, let's see. Antonio, what up? Scott Hill. Ivan. Panic bought some Cardano. There's, that's not a panic, sir. That's a well thought out plan. Uh, Ella Paul. Joe Fernandez. Sebastian. What's up? Bam. Uh, skeptical Poo. <laughs> Two tap pipeline. Nick Oliver. What up? Let's see. Uh, okay. Steve, Michael Murphy, uh, Sulin Silbar. Good to see you from Denver. Hello in Denver. And uh, Johnny Midas. Bam. Oh, you're in Hollywood Hills. Oh, you fancy as hell. Wait, why are you in Hollywood Hills? Johnny, I got to figure out what you do for a living. It sounds illegal, and I like it. Uh, let's see. Ryan, Dubai Money. I get that a lot too. And Brady. Okay. Well, as long as Brady's here, WVS 2014, Al Greco, I think we're pretty much ready to go. It's Amazon Prime Day. Yeah, it's Amazon Prime Day for everything. Did you buy anything? You know what? Let's save that. Let's play our non-commercial, commercial, non-commercial break. When we get back, 
I know you probably bought something over the last 24 hours. I want to know what that something is, as long as it's not XRP. We'll be right back. bought a robot vacuum i wanted a robot vacuum didn't we talk about that a robot vacuum those are yeah. so cool yeah but they always get stuck but I, I thought it would be cool just to go around and clean up stuff and then the better ones that you buy the the roombas they have one that it'll clean your room then it will go park then the other one will come out and it will mop it's two of them why can't one do it why, why would you buy one robot when you can pay for two robots for three times the price? Anyway, I'm kind of jealous of that. All right. What did you buy, Jerry? Let's hear it. I know you oh, bought well, something. Yes, I did. But everything has is in context. So I've got 29 assets. Not all 29 are in the actively continue to accumulate list, right? So I have several that are in the continually accumulating list. And one of them I just felt was such an incredible deal. It's called AGIX. It's part of the Singularity Net family. Cross-chain uh, exposure, Ethereum and Cardano, most likely in the future others, right? And so at 11 cents, it just made a lot of sense for me because my average cost for that token was higher than 11 cents to go ahead and allocate another stack of cash which does two things. It, it adds more volume, quantity of the asset, and it's bringing down my overall average price per coin when I'm able to gobble up chunks at these price points, which is good for me when it comes to the other side, when this market swings the other way, right? Instead of starting to get profitable at 20 cents, I start getting profitable at 18.5 cents. I was looking at so here are the the main ones I was looking at Nexo, Ooh. AGI AGIX, Ooh, Fetch, yes. But the one I pulled the trigger on, the one I pulled the trigger on, was Thorchain. Ah, it got so low that when I looked at my average, I think my average price is just under ten bucks, and it was around nineteen bucks a few weeks ago. And it got down into the fours. I think I got it for four bucks and 80 cents. I said, I got to do it. Got to do it. So I did it. I done did it. So that was my purchase. Um, and it's on the top. It's also kind of peaking the vortex list. So if it got a pop, but I'm treating this purchase almost like a vortex purchase. Meaning if it gets back up to par to the par value that I bought the original tokens for, I'll probably sell the profit I made in that trade. And then, then I would take that profit and I would put it into fetch is my first one because fetch is where I'm a little light ah. uh, com compared to AGI. AGI, I have a big fat knot fetch. I'm like, uh, uh, I wish I, I keep thinking I'm, I'm too light in fetch anyway. Interesting. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts do you see any other have to have to move opportunities that are kind of in front of you right now <clears throat> on the well, screen? For, but just for me, life? for me personally, see, everybody's got to, if everybody understands what their own strategy is, right, their own desired portfolio, then your allocation strategy should be to bolster that overall strategy. Um, I have two kind of credos, right? You can never have enough Bitcoin. It starts there, right? It starts that you can never have enough Bitcoin. So if that's the case, new money coming in should go to Bitcoin. But I tried doing this thing, and I'll tell you, it started, what, four months ago, where every dollar that came that came into my world that was going to go towards investing, at least 20 cents went to USDC coin, right? So I could start really fortifying a, a, a real cash position. 
well, this the last month of these markets has made it very difficult to do that. Right? Because I keep seeing these great opportunities. Um, but I think I need to, I, I want to stick with that. So truth is, I've still got some USDC. I could easily deploy it, but I'm not going to because I think it's important to have have that dry powder dry powder for two reasons one i still hold a loan on nexo and the us dollar although we all know it's depreciating year over year it doesn't have anywhere near the volatility of crypto and the the more cash you can have in a account where you've collateralized assets and taken a loan the less volatility that position is does that make sense you, you yeah, I actually keep some cash cash USD not even converted to USDC on Nexo because it's holding 14% right now. Isn't that good to the end of this month to the end of June? Mm -hmm. And I think it reverts to 12%. That's still pretty good. So I'm just using it as my bank account. If I'm going to keep money anywhere, why would I just have dead money in my Chase account? Let me tell you, did I tell you that Chase lost a, 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 an ATM deposit and they just told me to claim what it was just they said well how much was it I said I don't know they said well estimate I said I don't know 5,000 it was just cash I had kind of been accumulating for a couple months I hadn't deposited it so I made the deposit the machine froze up when the, when it was counting the you know 20s and stuff it said oh take this note inside I take this little crump, crumpled up piece of dump dump trash toilet paper i said uh -huh. yeah it, it ate my thing they said okay yeah that's cool so you need to just file a claim and and then just uh tell us how much you lost i said i don't know it was eating my money i go can't you just open up the machine there should be a big pile of money that didn't get deposited They're like well we don't that's not how it works well, i go how does it work they said well it's easy you just tell us how much you lost and then we'll credit your account and then once we count the money we'll add or deduct the difference I said, okay, that's what, but you can't just open up the machine because you could just open up the machine. They're like, no, we don't do it that way. I go, okay, 5000 So they credited my account 5000 I get a letter yesterday. It's been about a week. And it says, we agree the machine did have a fault. We've left the credit to your account valid. So what if I deposited 36 bucks and said 5000 I would get 5,000, but what if I had, had deposited 10,000? See, the thing is, I don't know how much I put in there. Ouch. So I'm not sure, it was it was around 5,000. I'm guessing this thing cost me a few hundred bucks because I think it was a little more, but the point is that I know for a fact they didn't do any actual research because it wasn't exactly 5,000 that, exa that disappeared. So, just knowing that, you just know what a mess banks are. Even when your money is in the bank, it might not actually be in the bank. Oh, I can guarantee you that. <laughs> the money you think is in the bank, it ain't in the bank. It's it's, it's a credit. <laughs> it's just Jamie Dimon siphoning. Ah, what a what a mess. Anyway, so there you go. Um, so let's do this. Um, let's go over. Let's look at Vortex real quick. And we're going to go through some articles and we'll get some thoughts. I did want your opinion, Jerry. Oh, wait. That's why I went back to big screen. Um, he said he had a Roomba vacuum to mop five years ago. General Dynamics made it before they sold the Roomba to another company. Worked great. Cool. All right. Um, so Sebastian basically said he bought AGX, but he can't get SDAO tokens. Listen, for anybody that owned, this is what you, you must have done. You must have owned it before April 17th anywhere. As long as you owned it anywhere before April 17th, AGI, then you got not only your tokens converted, but you got SDAO as part of their airdrop. It's a four month long airdrop. This is month two. Starting, uh, it was the 20th. So two days ago, they started doing the registration for this month's airdrop. So if you owned AGI before April 17th, and there's one other condition, but I don't think anybody did it, and I'm not going to bring it up to confuse anyone. But if you owned it before April 17th, okay either through MetaMask or wherever you had it, you had to sign up for it. And you had to have it on MetaMask or have it on uh, staked at Singularity, okay? 
So if you meet those conditions, go to Singularity Net and fill out the little form where just you just provide your wallet address and it will verify that you're good for this month's airdrop. And if not, not. Um, I'm just saying that because there's a few people that do fit in there. But remember, each month you have to certify for it. And it's I think last month I got like 500 and something SDAO tokens. And then what I did is when I first got my SDAO, if you remember the little shenanigan I pulled when they did the SDAO token sale, the tokens were 20 cents. On day one, they popped to like 90 cents. So I sold 20% of my tokens. Is that right? I sold 10% because it was 10% at anyway, that gave me, that basically covered, it almost covered all of my expenses and now all the tokens I have are basically free. Now I will not sell them because obviously AGIX, Singularity Net, the Marketplace, Autonomous Economic Agents, yay. I like all of that, so I just want to have exposure to it. And I think that's the next, I still think AI is the next big space. So anyway, that's a long, circuitous way of saying if you bought AGIX tokens, you're not going to get the SDAO tokens just given to you. However... Um, I'm sure there'll be other ways they incentivize people because you'll be able to create liquidity pools and do all this kind of cool stuff with AGIX and you'll be able to, I'm, I'm sure there will be AGIX SDAO liquidity pools because that's kind of the whole point is to get the token moving, get the, anyway, cool. All right. Uh, let's see. Thank you uh, for reminding me about that, by the way, I had forgot, I had not registered for this month's airdrop deal. Go and I'm register, gonna, bro. I just did. Okay, good. Right now, right while you were talking, one of the things that, that I'm going to need help with, I think, or maybe not, is that um, I'm going to wait. I'm not going to collect. I'm not going to, because they, they're right. charging. Why pay right. four times when I can pay well, for one time? Uh, let me, let me, t I agree in principle. I also think that maybe Ethereum is at a really cheap spot. And so what I would do is when you get this drop, the fees on Ethereum are the lowest they might be ever. Oh, that's because, a good point. Now so you're making a very good point right now. Oh, my God. What a, okay, hello. Keep talking. I'm just going to go ahead and get my. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I would do, Jerry, I would wait for this one to drop for this next one in the next few days. Which comes on the 25th. Yep. So when it drops, I would take the last two and I would I would pull those out. That's a um, smart. That's a smart move, right there, Mister Nick Black. Because I, I think I think the Ethereum, as much as we like to <coughs> like to s talk Ethereum, um, it's got ninety nine problems, but price is not one of them. You know how it is. You have all the Novagrats. And and the basic theory is this: big money follows their buddies. At first, the Novagrats and all these guys and Ralph Powell's and all that that are deeply bought in, sunk cost. They're, they're way in deep into Ethereum. And it doesn't matter. Rao may or may not understand the technical stuff. Novogratz definitely does. He's being really disingenuous when he tells everyone that Ethereum's the next Bitcoin and all this kind of very self-serving stuff that you would say when you bought Ethereum at 67 cents. So just be careful who you're listening to. Sometimes these big talking heads, when they're on CNBC – it's not for your benefit. It's for their benefit. They're out there talking their book and doing things like that. So just because he gets up there and says Ethereum is magical and he puts on his little blue Tony Stark glasses, I wouldn't take too much from that. But what you know is he's telling all of his buddies with big money that don't know. And they're coming in. They're like, what should I get? I got Bitcoin. He's like, cool. Grab some Ethereum. Ethereum's the next Bitcoin. And they just go, okay, because because Novogratz. And so just be careful. But I do think Ethereum is going to keep moving up. Is it going to move up as fast as Polkadot and uh, Cardano? Probably not even close. But it's still going to appreciate. By the way, did you hear, Jerry, that uh, Kusan, uh, that the, the next uh, parachain has been um, determined? It's the test net of Akala that will launch on... Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't hear that. Yep, it was just discovered today, or just the winner was determined today, uh, a little while ago. Let me let me just grab that. I don't think I put it up as one of the articles, but it is uh, interesting. It's called 
but it is the test net for Akala, um, which will be running on Kusama. So you're starting to see that. Uh, it was ninety six million dollars is what they is what the the auction. Uh, Karura, K A R U R A. They win the hundred million pair chain auction on Kusama. So they're starting to pick winners, and right now I know the market is gross and everybody's like, oh my god, it's the end of the world. No. But um, things will turn around. My guess is things will turn around pretty violently in the same way they've gone down pretty violently. Um, okay, let's look and see if there's any any action right here. Cool. Okay, the only things I wanted to mention, um, Parsec does keep coming back up. It hasn't cry It hasn't popped back into the to the 90s yet, but it did last week. So it is something to watch. I'll probably dig a little deeper. Thorchain is sitting right there at the top. All the metrics say it's time to buy Thorchain. So I buy Thorchain. Um, but technically, it's not a 90 yet. I'm front running the 90 only because I own a position in Thorchain. And I believe that this interchain operability is a big deal. And I think it'll be more of a big deal as Polkadot rolls out and their parachains roll out. And as Cardano launches smart contracts, when we get to the, the final iteration of Alonzo, which not too far away, we're talking September. We're almost about to, to be July, August, September. We have live, you know, and they already have smart contracts that they're testing right now. So pretty cool. So anyway, I have exactly the same thesis, only only I've expressed my trade, not through Thorchain, but through Quant. Hmm. Okay, yeah. So, but it's the same thesis. Yeah, interoperability, interchain, and we should just think of a world where chains are like Legos and you just grab one out of the box and use it when it's the most efficient next piece to use. And a lot of times people, if it's in a commercial application or re some kind of retail application, you might not even know or care. Yeah. You know, it's just like, it's just like, I don't know what kind of phone you have, and I don't know what kind of phone Nora or Lori or Scott Hill or any of those people have. What I know, though, is that when we go anywhere and we plug into Wi-Fi, our phone works with a various, you know, numerous different data providers, right, who are providing data to the, to the routers of the places that we plug into their Wi-Fi and with all different kinds of phones doesn't matter aos you know android it doesn't matter we and we don't care we just want the wi-fi i think a lot of those kind of things will be happening in crypto also people will not give a shit what yeah the underlying protocol is it's running whatever they're doing well it's like this does anybody here care who processes under underneath the credit card payment who's the actual final gateway payment gateway does anyone care how their email gets to grandma you know, saying you've lived too long, you need to die. Like, you know, like you always would send your grandma uh, that kind of email. So um, you don't care. It's just whatever whatever makes the transaction happen. I mean, how many people know what TCPIP is? Who any, who cares? <laughs> no one cares, but it makes it, it makes email work, right? And you're happy. You're like, cool. I can send email, and it just shows up at your place. That's cool. Um, okay, let's move along a little bit. Some fun articles. We're going to keep it light. Um, the reason we're not really talking about this whole crashy thing, I am going to I'm going to talk about an article that I found that was Bitcoin could go to 15,000, which is true. Bitcoin could do anything like if people keep selling. Um, I don't see it that way. I don't see Bitcoin going to 15K. I see Bitcoin going to the point where, you know, all of the idiots entered the market. Because that to me, there is a big chunk of this market that's fake. It's in the equity space too. It's fake. It's, I don't want to say it's the doge buck, but it's it's definitely the, the YOLO buck. And when the YOLO buck came into the market chasing shit like GameStop and all that, and then they turned their attention to crypto, it looks like maybe a lot of the YOLO has left. And they do get panicked and they do react. And apparently some of them have learned how to sell Dogecoin. <laughs> they learned how to sell it really well. And and, and a lot of these other tokens. So un, until every last idiot is out of this market, I don't know if we found a bottom. So we got a little bit of respite today where it kind of bounced off that 29. It got to like 29 flat almost, and it popped back up. But I don't think that's the bottom. 
So for those of you that are looking to lean into Bitcoin, I don't think now is the time. Um, well, I'm gonna, let, let me ask you about that. I want to piggyback sure. on that. So, so obviously, crypto kind of came to something based off of super, super early adopters, right? These were retail folks coming in, boom. And last year, we saw the advent of, of actual uh, publicly traded companies entering this space. Again, they're not traders, they're right? These are entities buying for the whole. But we also saw the just massive wave of speculators, or in the words of Nick Black, degenerate gamblers, coming in and taking massive amounts of leverage. Massive amounts of leverage. So my qu my question is, because the catnip that brings those speculators who are willing to do 100x leverage, etc., that'll come back again due to the nature of these markets, right? Fixed supply assets, the minute the pendulum swings and the demand exceeds the supply, you get roaring movement. It's right. not like black uh, Bitcoin's going to issue another million Bitcoin. Or, a th you know, or Cardano is going to issue another couple billion Cardano. It, 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 there is only what there is. So do you think we're going to see this constant wave of every time the movement starts going up, degenerate gamblers coming in with leverage? Yes. Thinking that this time they're not going to get wrecked. So what we could see for the next couple of years are a, a, much of what we just went through of this well, year. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of it um, – there's two things at work. You don't typically have a market like, okay, let me, un, let, me, let me back up a little bit. There are two things at work that I don't think a lot of people consider. And one of them is, I know the people here consider it because we talk about it, is the fact that a lot of Bitcoin leaves the market into private wallets and cold storage. And that means, and let me just reduce this to the simple. Let's say there's only 10 Bitcoin. Okay, 10 Bitcoin available for the world to trade, but nine of them are in cold storage, meaning now there's really only one Bitcoin to serve the entire market. Well, that the movements of that one Bitcoin dictate the price and the oh. market cap of all of it. And so you're not seeing a true story. So when you see bad behavior in, in and around that one Bitcoin, those 100 million Satoshi, okay, on various illiquid markets with a bunch of degenerate gamblers and bad behavior and all this, it can look like a lot of chaos is happening, but it's really only happening in one Bitcoin. There's a lot of chaos in one Bitcoin, and there's nine Bitcoin that are not being touched. And so that's a story. The, uh, and the ancillary to that in the other assets is the staking assets, where 70, 80, 90 percent, you look at Cardano, 80 plus percent staked. So – you have a very small amount of tokens on these relatively illiquid exchanges determining the price point, the current price, and market cap of the entire network. That is, so, that's an amazing yeah. thing when you think about it, right? That a couple of – okay, so Cardano, 45 billion coins, 30 released into the world, 15 held by the entities that are used for – various things the the funding that they're going to do and obviously providing the staking rewards okay great a very small amount of that is the float that's actually available yet we're seeing we've just seen a violent swing right from a high of 240 to down to 115 in the last 40 days cardano was a buck oh one on some exchanges this morning and let me tell you what I thought about doing, and I thought hard. I was about to flip 10 Bitcoin into Cardano just later, and I was just telling myself, okay, it's got to get to 99 cents. And if it had touched 99 cents, poof. Now, how hard would it have been to fill that order? That's a lot of Cardano. Right, but it's not a lot on Coinbase Pro. Coinbase Pro has good liquidity. So well, three hundred thousand. Hmm. Uh, it would have filled. It would have filled. It wouldn't have been super easy, but it would have been filled. But, but look, I'm not. I'm not out of thinking of that trade. Matter of fact, 
Oh, I got out of thinking about that trade. As a matter of fact, what he's not telling you folks is that there is a buy order already on Coinbase Pro <laughs> at 99.5 cents. Per well, the thing dollar. is, it, it bounced. I kept watching and watching, and Bitcoin was at 30, right at uh, 29 and change. And I'm like, okay, 29,000, 290,000. And I'm looking and I'm like, okay, 290,000. So I'm already thinking in my mind, okay, I'll get 290,000 or 293,000 because 200, whatever. And then, of course, because Cardano never stays down, it bumped back up. T- it went up 20% or 18% in, in 14.6 seconds. So I was like, ugh. Damn um, but, you. <laughs> I know. And I'm and so I just do the math because I go I was I took some profit from from Cardano into Bitcoin at a buck thirty seven. Yeah. And I took it into Bitcoin when Bitcoin was thirty five K. But Bitcoin at thirty two K and Cardano at a buck, it makes sense to go back to Cardano. Interesting. Right? I did so I did exactly the same thing. Well, not right around those price points, right? I mean, yeah. when you when your when your average cost is two point five cents per Cardano and it's up over a dollar, it was like, do I take some off the table, and and fortify some positions that I really wanted to do? And I did. I was. I'm very glad that I did that. I mean, half of my portfolio came from that move. You know, taking a two thousand dollar chunk of this or three thousand dollar chunk of that or whatever. Da 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 da. Um. The reason, just real quick, that's a good question. Um, why price in dollars? I price in dollars because the world still prices in dollars as just a reference point. But when I look, once I start swapping currencies back and forth, I look in terms of those currencies. Um, so I look at the ADA BTC pair in Satoshi's for the for the return because I think Cardano will move much fat much fuck. Cardano is has a much likelier chance of being five dollars than Bitcoin does being, you know, a hundred thousand in September. There's a good chance we see, I mean, a real good chance, not even a hopeful chance that we see at least for a moment when Alonzo rolls out a five dollar Cardano. You start going, okay, so how do I get exposure to that near term, you know, velocity? Even if you're not like I love Cardano, whatever, that's fine. But you, if you're a Bitcoin maxi, you should still look for ways that are more efficient than mining. And the way you mine is by using these other assets that have a good story and volatility and some and some real velocity in the token. And if you know, like I think DOT is too cheap, way too cheap. I think that's going to do – you know, I'm really surprised that thing's not – I mean I'm not with the market sell-off. But I'm surprised that we're not at 40 or 50 dropping down to say 35 versus being at 15 bucks 15 dollar dot everybody here just got a seven month reset button yeah so wow so polka dot it's beyond under undervalued it's priced correctly because the price is always correct but it's undervalued i think it's incredibly undervalued the thing is you got in these kind of when everything goes chaotic you have to do two things one you have to resist the urge to spend all of your free cash shopping trying to find the bottom i would rather wait for a confirmation of the bottom and we start to move back up i'd rather lose a little bit of the discount than eat the entire you know than eat another 20 or 30 percent so i'm looking at cardano of course now it's a buck 20 it's up 20 percent since i was looking at it just two hours ago dick but um but that's still that's still not the trade for me um, if I look down the list, I go, okay, what's the most unloved asset of the assets that I that I like? Who got beat up the best? And uh, I, I find Fetch at 18 cents. It hasn't picked up. Why? Because people aren't looking directly at it. So Fetch and AGIX. AGIX is 13 cents. Crap, man. That's, I gobbled up a chunk at 11. That's dope. 11 cents. You got 11 cents? Uh, where'd you, KuCoin? No, I, I, I'm in Costa Rica, so I went Binance Global. Oh. You get in, and then you get out. Yeah, and then did you park it over on Singularity? No, I got it sitting in my friggin', believe it or not, my MetaMask wallet. Oh, yeah, no, that's I, fine. I, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not spending 
the money to stake on Singularity for two months, and then I got to pay to get it out so I can get it into my Cardano wallet. And then, then well, you won't have to pay to get it out because remember, um, with uh, AGIX bringing AGIX out, the fees are going to be pennies. No, not bringing it out of a, a an Ethereum based thing. Well, I think once um, once the smart contracts roll out on Cardano, and I think you'll be able to pull the wrap version out. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but someone in their little chat group, and again, this is a chat room, and I don't I don't know for sure, but someone was saying the fees to exit AGIX will be a lot different than the fees would have been to exit AGI. Interesting, I don't know. because I the only do staking it. mechanism I'm aware of for AGIX is through Ethereum. Well, right through the wallet, but I'm saying, um, yeah, you know, you went, which is you still went, got you still got gas fees to get out regardless. Right, but AGIX of is a token that works both with Cardano and Ethereum. I'm not debating that, but I'm, okay. I'm talking about the cost. Until I, I, I could be completely wrong, right? Which I've been yeah. on this show many times. Thank you for pointing that out, Mr. Black. <laughs> but I will tell you, I will tell you that for me, I'm such a penny pincher that for the two months that I'm not accruing yield. I'm willing to do that because I believe September-ish, the new Daedalus update is going to come out. I'll be able to have my AGIX wallet on Cardano, stake to AGIX pools on the Cardano through the Daedalus wallet, and I'll just do that, and it won't cost me a dollar. Right. Yeah, so what I heard, and again, it was just in the Singularity chat group on on, uh, Telegram, was that you'll exit in a different way you entered. You won't, it won't be an Ethereum transaction on the way in, on the way out. Oh, okay. Now that I didn't, I didn't get that. I, what I was listening to, I listened to Ben Gortzel in one of his, uh, it's not like, you know, Charles always does these little AMAs. It was a thing. It was something similar to that. And, and he was saying they could not find a way around each of us wallet holders not having to pay the gas fees to get out and move it over to Cardano that he he was sorry, but we would have to eat all those costs. And I went, okay, good enough for me. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to eat those costs. Yeah. I put it there. Uh, I also like the idea of just having the tokens gone idle hands, right? I don't, I don't have any desire to trade them because they're out of my hands. Um, Look at Nora. Ooh, that nice. was a nice, smart play, young lady. Yeah, so you're actually you're actually winning on that, and uh, you got the tax hit. That's good. Yeah, a lot of people could tax harvest in a situation like this, depending on where you bought. I bought uh, polka dot at three bucks, so there's no harvesting for me. I'm just collecting that yield. Okay, um, so let's just look real quick at this article. I just want to go through it. Um, we kind of talked about it. Uh, the price of Bitcoin just north of 29K. It's 32 right now, but whatever. The, remember, this was an hour ago, so you know everything changed. Um, it's a little more than 3,000 above the price, 26. So 26 is his cost with the new coins he just bought. I know we talked about this last week. I'm not going to go through this whole thing. Um, I just wanted to mention it because we had talked about it last week. We did a whole show basically on it. Do you think he goes now with the other 500 plus million and buys more Bitcoin? You think people are going to go? It for wouldn't that now? shock me one second. It wouldn't shock me a bit because I believe there is still such a large amount of liquidity in the "quote unquote" junk bond world, looking for a place to to be to park their money. That it wouldn't shock me one bit for them to to do another five hundred million dollar raise that gets oversubscribed, and it could be it could. Shit, it could end north of a bill. Just like he did. 6% junk bond, da-da-da-da-da, senior note bullshit conversion. Here you go. Wouldn't shock me one bit. Do you think after people seeing the market sell-off we've had the last six weeks, do you think, I mean, to the regular person outside the crypto space, I would think this disincentivizes any kind of participation in crypto. Mm Mm-hmm. So we'll see. I mean, I guess it depends on the appetite of the of your junk bond investor. Those guys know that there's a lot of risk and that that whole game is risk. So I regardless I agree that- of how long you've been here, there are two kinds of people, right? There's only two kinds of people. There You're are not gonna those- say spears and no, no. Um, okay. There are people that are looking at the market right now going, This is like a Black Friday 
sale, right? Where I can go in and get that big screen TV that yesterday was $1,500. I can get it for $750 today. Right. Same exact television. It's going to operate exactly the same as it did yesterday, right? There are those people that see this is an incredible buying opportunity. And then there are going to be those that go that that are just like every other market and every other thing. If it's going down, they don't want no part of it. It's only when it's going up do they want to get in. It's like your friends, Nick. You, I know you have friends that will only call you what's going on with this thing when it's had a 30 or 40% gain. Yeah, well, that's when they want to buy. Exactly. It, it, that does not make sense to me. Yeah, people don't like to buy into panic. Um, real quick. So question, Nick, why don't you OTC? I do have an OTC account. I have a corporate account with uh, Kraken, but Kraken's an American exchange. Kraken reports to the IRS and all the other stuff. And I just prefer to do some of my swashbuckling in other areas. And that's all we're going to say on a publicly. <laughs> yeah, it's all we're going to say about forum. it. And that's all we're going to say about that. But I definitely, I pay my tax burden. Um, I, uh, anyway, doesn't matter. Okay. Um, let's look at another article that I found. Bitcoin down to 15K, then back up to 80K. What? Negative sentiment continues to prevail on the Bitcoin price. A heart cracked down from China, followed by intense media interest on, on how Bitcoin is perceived to be harming the environment. <laughs> Technical indicators show Bitcoin to be weak, an extremely uh, important juncture. Um, going below 30K support could see a large sell off. Well, these you're going to see more articles like this than less. Why? Because what else are you going to write? You know, everybody's going to predict all this kind of crazy stuff all over the place. Somebody's going to be right about it. Everybody else is just mostly being sensational. Uh, Andre Sanskin, can't pronounce the last name, Alou, is co-founder of Sublime Traders and is known as Logical Orange. Hmm. <laughs> I already don't trust him. He runs the successful cryptocurrency trading signals website. Okay. And, uh, and has his own larger, uh, large trade following. He was recently interviewed on Kitco Kitco, by the way, which is a gold exchange. And we were always, we would use Kitco to get what the price was of gold. when We were in the gold business. Um, but Kitco is one of the worst. I mean, they have the worst articles, the worst production. It's just a dumpster fire. Um, anyway, whatever, Kitco, and had an interesting take on what where Bitcoin was headed next. One, I've never heard of this dude. Two, I've never heard of Sublime Traders. Three, I've never heard of Logical Orange. I know what Logical and Orange are on their own. I've never heard of this dude, and I'm guessing most people haven't, um, evidenced by the kind of shoddiness of this article. Well, let's hear what he has to say anyway. I mean, just who knows? Fine, Jerry, fine. He says he has longer-term plan for the next few months. He says the uh, the plan takes into account shorts as well as the upside. Right. He's taking that cautious middle of the road. He thinks 30000 is an accumulation level, but if Bitcoin drops below, the next level is 20000 he says. And he says that in between these two important levels, he has a plan for shorts. So let me get this right. 30000 is where you should be buying, but if it drops below, you should also be buying at twenty. But if it's in between, he has a plan for that. Uh, <laughs> should Bitcoin go down heavily, he thinks that the minimum floor would be maybe, and this is their words, the minimum floor would be at maybe 15000 So first it's 30000 then he's got a 20000 He's got a plan for twenty to 30000 It could maybe go to 15000 He explains – this would signify the completion of a head and shoulders pattern. That's all I need to hear. Yeah, another idiot. Okay, listen, yeah. folks, <laughs> folks. Technical analysis is an interesting study, but not something to base investment decisions upon. Yeah, I just haven't seen anybody. I mean, there are guys with just, you could say, are experts. Peter Brandt is an expert chart analysis so yep. ta is his he's like the babe ruth of ta right he ain't getting it right and who gets it right these are just not nobody yeah, no one no one does even in the equity space and and that's a that's a that's a formed market it's a fully formed relatively saturated market 
The crypto space is not a fully formed market. It's a brand new asset class. We're barely a decade in. As far as having regulated financial products, we're four years in. So this is brand new. And until this is a real market, you can't even imagine that technical analysis would work to any degree of, of repetitiveness. And, uh, you know, good luck. If you're trading squiggly lines, good luck. Again, it's it's interesting to look at charts. It's necessary to kind of understand what they're saying. Looking at volume makes a lot of sense. Volume weighted average price, the VWAP makes a lot of sense. I won't trade off of it. Understanding how many longs yeah. there are, long contracts, shorts, yeah. things of Looking that Looking at open interest, all of this it's stuff is important. important. And it's and it's important to it's 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 necessary to understand, but it's not sufficient to make trades. And just be very careful that you don't start reading into the lines and forget the, the macro is where the – eventually, I would think, where the story is, unless it's meme coins. And then you want to go opposite macro. Yeah, Whatever. it's all sentiment. It's yeah. that's a pure sentiment play. It's a pure sentiment play. But you can trade off that. But just remember, those are trades, not investments. And if you do a trade on a meme coin, you know for a fact that the, you're going to have to exit. There's not like I'm going to buy for the future. There's no buying – AMC for the future. There's no buying GameStop or Hertz or Ford for the future. You will have to exit those positions probably on the way back down. So just, just be careful. Okay. China's 2021 Bitcoin crackdown. What do you need to know? Tensions are running high as Bitcoin. Oh, wait, we need some conspiracy music. Don't we? Isn't this the kind I mean, of... The t they're mobilizing tanks and regiments of, of armed personnel. Yeah, we definitely need – hold on. Let me get – damn it. Get back here, button. There we go. We got it. Let's get some conspiracy music. Okay. Tensions are running high as Bitcoin hash rate plummets, and Chinese authorities issue new warnings to banks. Here's everything you need to know. China has cracked down hard on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies after the past few weeks. Uh, newsflash, they've been doing it since 2015. There's no surprise here. This is the same. This is China being China. I, I always I think it's funny when people are like, oh, my God, China's they don't like Bitcoin, man. China, it's not Bitcoin. It's not even crypto. G is is unwinding all of the safety mechanisms and provisions that were put in place after Mao to prevent another guy like Mao. And G is just like Mao. So this is what you get. It's not – it's every market's getting regulated. They're releasing their own digital asset, and of course they're shutting down everything else. Now, I think they are they are being they're, – they're game theoretically flawed in this. China – I'm a big – I'm not a big fan of China. I'm not a big fan of the way they – governance, but I am a fan of their track record. They've been very good at managing their, their country for many thousands of years. This, I feel like – is flawed thinking. I think they had a huge advantage by having so much of the Bitcoin mining take place in China because that was always a lever they could push or pull. Uh -huh. And I think they have decimated that. And I I doubt they even took advantage of it. They could have done a Goldfinger where they co-opted the network, shorted Bitcoin. They could have done all sorts of really cool things, which I wouldn't have liked, but I would have at least respected. Um but this is just dumb behavior in my opinion. It's just bad behavior, and it's flawed theoretically. But I think they I, are – Well, that's what I think yeah. is the most important part is flawed theoretically. So take, a, so take a look at this. The economics of mining already tell us mining is going to migrate to the cheapest sources of electricity, mm -hmm. right? So the question was whether or not they, they put in some regulation or bullshit – the second the government says we're no longer going to subsidize the electricity, the mining would have moved anyway. Sure. It they didn't have to threaten anybody. Anyway. You didn't yeah. have to threaten. It's, 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 it's dumb. It's a bad argument. I mean, it's a and, bad piece of news. Horrible article. Hurt, Who wrote this they, piece of shit? Well, they hurt their own companies too. Well, and well, Eli, that's, that's the whole point. This is about capital flight, but this is the wrong way to do it. What you don't do is kick out all the producers of Bitcoin – in an attempt to quell capital flight, you're in so what they, you know, what part of the worry is, and this is going to happen anyway, is they, they release their new digital asset. People take that digital asset and convert it into an asset they trust, like Bitcoin, the same way you do with dollars. I don't trust dollars. I buy Bitcoin. Yeah. I don't trust dollars. I buy Cardano, whatever. 
So, or stable coin even and go park it somewhere. So what they don't want is the DCEP being immediately flipped for another currency. However, do the Chinese think, and this is just a question I'm going to kind of throw out there. Do they think they're going to create this DCEP and launch it and that no, no one in China or outside of China, expatriates, or anybody that accepts the currency for trade is not going to trade that currency into another currency? Is the assumption that the DCEP will never be used to trade into another currency ever? Because these two things don't gel. If you're scared that people are going to convert the DCEP into Bitcoin, they're still going to do it. They're just not going to do it through mining rigs. Like, I don't understand. So I get what they're trying to do. And part of it is also wrestling back control. They bought into the environmental argument a little bit. They're going green. But the Chinese are not statistically dumb. These are incredibly intelligent. Typically, these are game theoretical individuals. They And they have long-term vision. They look 100 years out. They have a thing called the 100-year plan. They have the 20-year plan. We have like the six-month plan. The Chinese think – We have the long next term. election plan. Yeah, right? So we have such perverse, such perverse short-term incentives, right? They are long-term thinkers. This, if you look in the long term, I think this is incredibly flawed, and this shows that there is a lot of mm, discontent and poor decision-making going on in the Chinese government or at least – you know, in the places in the government that, that you could you you used to be able to rely on for relatively smart decision making or or you know some kind of intellectual prowess. Now I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the f is going on. But I think it was a huge loss for China, leading. I mean, le exiting all these mining companies that are like, okay, since we're out, we're out. They could have they could have completely taken control of the Bitcoin. Really, they could have controlled Bitcoin. Well, I here, here's here's a theory that has, that nobody's really talking about. Once you get a company to actually make the move, right? They're going to make the move. Who's to say China doesn't have a quote unquote sovereign entity ready to come in and 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 slide into a slot? Well, what would they? What what equipment would they use? Well, because they're they, booting out the mining. The companies that produce the equipment are bailing. Yeah, but that doesn't – not – whoa, I didn't read that. You're seeing the actual manufacturers? Well, they're – they're because remember, a lot of the manufacturers are the ones that are mining. That's true, but there are there are a bunch of those component set right. entities yes, but, that are still just pumping away those right. things. Right, but these mining companies, like if you look at um, you know Bitmain, for example, they they mine against their clients for several months before they release new equipment. This is true. And so if they can't mine, if they can't flip a box on, I mean, how, all that's gone. So they yeah, have to exit. That's true. You know what I mean? So, you know, you look at some of the bigger pools, you know, F2 pool and the ant pool and all this kind of stuff. You start going, damn, that's probably. Yeah, you think that opens you know, up the door for some of these smaller countries? Let's just use El Salvador as, a, as an example to say, okay, listen. We know you, you're going to need to expatriate from your whatever, right, your, your area in China. We have this energy source here, Volcano. We'll call it, uh, you know, Bitcoin Volcano. And here's the, here's the site. You want to come partner with us, right? Cutting down the overhead costs for us, the country, to, you know, buy these ASIC rigs. And you having to find a place where you can find competitive electricity. I mean, I think it's an opportunity for the for countries that have um, low, you know, to aggregate low temperature or have gone hydro and have a lot of green energy and have a lot of uh, green excessive energy, and they could just say, "Listen, we have X amount of excess energy. We'd love to grab all those clients." I mean, I'm sure that's what that's where these guys are all going, right? Like they're they're all going towards the next best thing. Which I'm guessing Ecuador's, Paraguay's. I mean, these are these are countries well, with and maybe massive go, maybe go green deeper energy south energy reserves. Go deeper south, right? Go, uh, can you imagine being Argentina? Can yeah. you imagine being Argentina going, wait a second, there's gonna be 
let's say 30% of the Bitcoin network hash rate potential leaving, needing a place to go. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll put, we'll do a tax incentive thing here. We'll do a whole thing here. We'll do a whole, we'll allow you to conduct business in the U S dollar thing here. You know, da, 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 da. Just partner with us and, and let us buy wholesale or whatever the OTC or whatever the, the deal is. That would be interesting. Yeah. So this, this kind of, and also, by the way, this should shock the Bitcoin core team. I think the Bitcoin community may need to have a head to head and, 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 uh, oh, maybe a heart to heart and kind of go, um, is it time for us to look? at some other ideas as resources for determining consensus. You know, I mean, proof of work. Sacrilege. I know. Proof of work and proof of stake and proof of merit and proof of honesty and proof of authenticity. These are all just resources. Charles did a really good discussion about this. These are just resources. One of many, some of many resources that can be used to determine consensus right oh my so, god you've just opened the can of worms my friend i mean shouldn't they at least be open to the idea that maybe we don't want to be held effing hostage by these countries and their whims right i don't know man i mean is there a world jerry is there a world where bitcoin entertains the idea of bringing in other resources for the determination of consensus. I think, no, I, you know what I think? I think, I think there's such a core tenet that it is what it is. The code is law. It ain't going to get changed. And uh, what you would see is you would see lunar mining, solar powered Bitcoin ASICs on the moon microwaving the, the code back to the back to the planet before you see them entertain some other consensus mechanism and and for those of us that, that and that could be to its death its detriment yeah i'm going to i'm going to basically reduce all of cryptocurrency wow. into three little statements and i want people okay. to memorize this and they are Take somebody, send out the block, validate it. And I want you guys to put this into memory because this is all of cryptocurrency. You pick someone or a resource, okay, to determine what the block is or what the chunk of data is that you're about to send out, right? You then send out that block. You propagate it out to all of the other assets, in your network, whether they are other mining rigs, whether they are addresses, whether they are stake pools, whatever it is, you send the block out, you propagate the block so that we all have a copy and then it gets validated. That is all of mining. That is all of proof of work. That is all of everything. And all we're talking about right now, the only, listen, every one of these blockchains, ledgers, distributed ledgers, DAGs, whatever you want to call it, they all, step two and three are the same. You send out the block, Everybody gets a copy, you validate it, or you get enough to validate. You validate a piece. Anyway, everybody that was sends a great out the block. whiteboard video Charles did. Yes. The only thing we're arguing about is the way that the initial pick somebody part of it, the way that the initial and what you could refer to it as resource, uh, mm -hmm. it would be a token and in, in, um, uh, proof of stake. It would be uh, computation and proof of work. Um, but we're just determining which resource orders the block and determines what it will look like. Steps two and three are the same. You transmit it, you validate it. Just step one. The only difference between all of this shit is step one. The thing is, step one can get you in a lot of trouble, bro. And I just think it might be worth the, the discussion for the Bitcoin community. Do they want this kind of shit to keep happening? Are they okay with this? Since I own some Bitcoin, guess what? I'm part of the community. You own some Bitcoin. You're part of the community. Everybody here is part of the community. So if all we're arguing about is the idea that maybe you could broaden step one, that you could broaden the resources used, right, then I think that's a discussion worth having. 
And they can, Max Kaiser and all these other fucking retards can do their thing and they can scream, we're not selling. Elon, you're a dick. And all this kind of stuff. Why don't you clean up your own mess first? Right? You want to answer all, even if the, even if the argument with all of these idiots about industrial, you know, destruction of the environment and blah, blah, blah. And, he, you know, on one hand, Elon Musk is, you know, nuking <laughs> the environment with his lithium mines where child laborers work and die and all that. And that's cool as long as he gets on the, you know, as long as he tweets that he wants environmentally safe Bitcoin. But why don't you just put that argument to rest? Reduce the amount of reliance on proof of work. Open yourself up to the idea that if Bitcoin's for everyone, why not have a chunk of the of the resource um, for determining consensus be proof of stake? A chunk of it, proof of merit, people that do things, people that publish, proof of you know, proof of possession. You could do all sorts of weird. There's a million of these. You could you can have an infinite amount of resources that are weighted. The weighting can change, and it can change as the community changes. And you can disincentivize neural network. Uh, a neur neural network or neuro? I think it's neuron network. Oh, uh, yeah, I have heard of it. I don't uh, know much about it. I do. It. I own so it's a it's a penny a pop right now. It's it's N E U R O N. And neuron. it's it's very similar to what you're you know what you're describing. It's it's uh it's got a proof of work consensus mechanism it's got a proof of stake consensus mechanism and it does different things for for different uses yeah it does it in a different way for different things so we should have x of n resources right one of n resources all these different resources for that stage one for that pick somebody stage and i just think the bitcoin community i mean unless they like this unless they like the price getting chopped down by you know 30 percent every time some country just <laughs> has a bad day and all this kind of stuff and I mean, it doesn't matter to me in the long run because I think we're going to be looking at a 10 million plus Bitcoin by the end of 2020, 2030, which seems like, oh, it's so far away. It's not really, it's nine years away. But I think we probably in the next three years will see a million dollar Bitcoin, um, which is cool, right? That's It will not be, hurt my feelings. That'd be a 30X. Um, now, let me ask you this. Hmm. How would you feel about sending that 10 bitcoin to get some cardano well if right if if in three years yes each bitcoin's worth a million dollars and cardano yep. is still in that it hasn't quite found that killer app yet it's this incredibly engineered product but it yep. doesn't have a it doesn't have a use case that's drawing in billions and billions of users everybody said you know this world fucking mobile token thing is a piece of shit all the all these things are pieces of shit. Sunday swap is just that. It's a Sunday swap piece of shit. Blah blah blah. And Cardano is at two dollars and fifty cents. But you well well I know, if it, everybody if it was, that was on the show today reminds you, Nick. Remember that day you shoved off ten Bitcoin to buy Cardano because of the ADA Bitcoin variance at that particular moment. Right, but right now when I look at Cardano and Bitcoin, like for instance, I would rather. This moment, this second, I would rather have Ethereum than Bitcoin for the next <laughs> for the next say sixty days. Because yeah, I think to the end of the year, I think you're right. Because I think Ethereum is going to do just fine, and I think Cardano is going to do really well as they roll out smart contracts. And to me, if Bitcoin does great, it gets back to sixty k over the next two months. I don't think it will. I think we're probably going to be plagued here in the thirty to forty forty five range. But again. What do I what do I have to back that idea? Nothing. Just random thoughts, whimsy, nothing. There's nothing I don't have any and no one else does either. No it's, one can tell you what that's the thing. No one can tell you what these prices are going to be. You can look at all the squiggly lines in the world. You got to buy these assets because you believe in them, because you trust in them, and then you trade around these assets. You find out what you think are yeah. the most valuable, and I think in the next 3 years Head-to-head, -head, Bitcoin versus Cardano. Cardano is going to smash Bitcoin. price -wise. I think so, too. Well, it has everything to do with the order of magnitude, right? It's yeah. orders of magnitude. And, and Bitcoin has seen all those thousands of percent gains already. Cardano hasn't.
well, 1300% gain as of today, but I mean, you, you know what I mean for the last year. Yeah. The point is Bitcoin isn't going to go up a thousand percent in the next X years. Cardano very well could. And I will, what is that called? Is that called orders of magnitude? Yeah, orders of magnitude, logarithmic progression. Um, logarithmic progression. But let me let me also say this, Jerry. One thing, you know, I'm getting, I'm starting to get less and less excited about being a Bitcoin holder with the Max Kaisers, with the weird behavior of some of these guys. And I get to a point where I almost go, you know what? I don't fucking care how good Bitcoin does. I don't, the community is starting to gross me out. Like okay. Some of these people, I, it's, it's almost like I don't want it. I don't want to own it because of guys like Max Kaiser, because those, these dudes are fucking disgusting and they're just, they're, they're, they're awful. They're just fucking awful people. I don't care if he's 70. I would headbutt that motherfucker until his nose caved in. Because he's just garbage, dude. And and those kinds of people are incredibly toxic. They ruin it for a lot of people. And if you were new to the space and that was – what if you just went to the Bitcoin Miami thing and you're getting into Bitcoin? Oh, I know. Wasn't that something else? What a weird circle jerk, creepy fucking goddamn mess that was. And you just you, – you probably walk out of there like, what in the fuck? I'm out. This community is freaking creepy. <sighs> I'm out. I tend to lean more towards the Preston Pish, Michael Saylor type, you know, at least it, it, it's it's grounded in some rationale. You know, you can't go wrong with engineering dynamics and things when you're looking at things based on those kind of principles. It's not Max Kaiser does kind of taint it, doesn't he? He's kind of stupid. He's awful, dude, and he's gone crazy. And and the problem he's is, he's gotten crazier and, and crazier. The the yeah, recently. he's going he's going nuts, like yeah. nuts. And I think he's just doing it because he wants to have he wants the honor of inciting Elon into responding directly to him. Because guess what, Elon, this is a message to Max Kaiser. Elon doesn't know who the fuck you are because you're not anybody worth knowing. Right. And when you're rolling around in your little jet wheelchair in your retirement home where you already should be, and they put the Bane muzzle on you, you're like, I'm <laughs> I'm Max Kaiser. No one's listening to you, dude. The problem is right now the the, the Bitcoin community is they're kind of cringy. Not all of them, but enough of them. They're kind of cringy. I got offered someone to send me out to um, Miami for that conference thing. And I was like, hell no, dude. Can you imagine how awful that would be being stuck with all those people? Now, I would have gone to an Ethereum conference and I'm an Ethereum hater-ish, right? Like I kind of hate on Ethereum because I think, you know, it's got problems and I think the people are lazy and there's all, but I would, but it's an innovation hub. Everybody that's working on Ethereum, they're still innovating and, Algorand innovating Tezos, even though they started with kind of a felony, they're innovating. So I don't know, man. And the thing is, Gary, uh, Kaiser's been here a long time. Kaiser's been made rich off of Bitcoin. And what makes him crazy now is I know for a fact, I believe, I don't know. I believe he's scared to death that these other assets that have billions of tokens are just going to walk right by. And that Bitcoin's going to end up a top 10 asset, you know, six, seven on the call sheet. And then the myth is gone. And then guess what? We have people buying things because there's utility associated with them, hopefully. Right? Still, there's going to be speculators, right? But then people are buying Bitcoin because they want a store of value. And they're buying this because they want smart contracts. And they're buying this because they want the future of autonomous economic ages, all that. With Bitcoin being number one and everything's priced in Bitcoin and Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin and the Bitcoin community and have fun being poor. It's just a fucking nasty scenario. It would be it would do the space so much benefit for Bitcoin to be the third or the fourth asset. And it could still be a million dollar. That's the thing. It could still be an incredibly expensive, valuable asset. Doesn't have to be the, the top in market cap. Agreed.
How crazy would Max be if, if Dogecoin had passed Bitcoin in market cap? I mean, they have a gazillion tokens anyway. What about Shiba Inu? That right? would be a heck of a TikTok video. Watch Max Kaiser's Ooh. head explode Dude, on you air. A, you would have a coronary on top of a heart. The attack. vein, the, the little veins that start popping up on the forehead. And, and then you see the one <laughs> turn from blue to purple. You know that, that that's really not a good sign. Yeah, and then brown. Because the black piece of coal that is in place of his heart starts pumping out goo. Uh, anyway, okay, oh. enough enough crapping on Kaiser. Um, it's just I wish the Bitcoin community would be open to making some changes. They're probably not. Um, so everything we're saying is pretty stupid. Um, uh, par parting parting words. Uh, final thoughts, Sherry, on this day of red and panic and and chaos. If you're if if you're here and you're scared, you're not alone. This is a great time to like really learn about what you're what you got. And I would say this one statement: study until the fear is gone. Continue to study until the fear of what's happening around you dissipates. Yeah, I would say. Um there are opportunities whenever there's all this panic. And I actually was panicking last night because I was overwhelmed by, by things like I was, I was having to rebalance where my priorities were. Okay. Fetch AGIX. Uh, oh no, wait, now Cardano's down a buck. Okay. Wait, now do I go from Bitcoin to car? Oh no, wait, wait, wait. Now, uh, polka dot is down to 14, 13, but shit. Okay. And I was having to constantly like, uh, I've Where only got a hundred thousand dollars, but I got I'm two million dollars worth of shit I want to buy. Man, and you just go, that's and that goes back to what Jerry was saying is the value of having some dry powder. So have a good day. Stay out of trouble. Don't do anything. My poor insolvent drunk, strung out of meth, high as a kite. Grandmother wouldn't do. I'm going to tell her to bring out the Ouija board. Uh, because I'd like to know what tomorrow's gonna look like. And uh, that's my that's my kind of technical analysis. We use a Ouija board when grandma strung out on meth. Time to chit chat. You know nothing about blockchain. We here to fix that. You want the news on the new stocks? This where you get that. So go and grab you a nice chair. It's time to sit back and talk to profit. Hey, hey, you talking to the profit? Hey, hey. You talk, we talking condos and nice clothes and dropping Lambos. I remember them night codes, we couldn't stand those. We tried to drop on them house roads, but had to stay low. Now there's solutions to hard bills we couldn't pay for. I talked to profit to get some profit, we couldn't change the top. If it's a stock and I need a cop it, I wait for him to drop it. Ain't no option, let's get it popping, we chilling in the trap. I need some crypto putting in my pocket, by any means I rock. This is the profit with Nick Black, it's time to chit chat. You know nothing about blockchain, we here to fix that. You want the news on the new stocks, this where you get that. So Go and grab you a nice chair. It's time to sit back and talk to profit. Hey, hey, you talking to the profit? Hey, hey, you talking to the profit? <laughs> it's all fake news. It's phony stuff. It didn't happen.